Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff here. It's that time of the year. Leaves are changing colors. It's getting a little bit chillier out, and it's time to close up another great season of Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. To do that, I decided to invite my great friends from the north of the border smoking squad. I said, hey guys, come on over. Let's head in the backyard. Let's have a fantastic barbecue extravaganza. We will talk barbecue. We will cook on lots of different devices. We'll cook lots of different food. We'll have a great time. Let's head out back and get started. We all know each other here. That's you know wrapping up the season, not the barbecue season, because we cook all year long, but you know the weather's getting colder, the leaves are starting to fall off the trees. So that's why I wanted to pull together the north of the border smoking squad. I thought we'd all get together and we'd cook some great food. I got a couple of I got three smokers going. I've got the discada ready to go. We got an open fire pit. We've got a propane. We've got all kinds of ways to cook. I put a bunch of groceries out. We're just going to grab them. Now, Rob, I know you're not the guy. You're ve you come from a family of vegetarians, right? I do. Okay, so you're you can cook, but you've got to get a little more creative. We usually come up with some sort of an Asian, um, like a stir fry, or a, a chicken stir fry, or maybe a veg, uh, like a vegetable stir fry. And how do you do that on the on the barbecue? Like, you, you well, the barbecue is a little bit more difficult, but if you do it on like a blackstone flat top grill, that you don't have all the all the um, the grill, the, the grains and stuff, stuff so the rice, yeah, so yeah. the rice doesn't fall between yeah, exactly, the grains. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you do it outside, and now you, yeah, now you've got this black stone grill that you exactly. cook on that. Exactly. So I've got a bunch of ingredients in there, and I know you brought a bag of some extra stuff and hopes of cooking. What are you going to cook if we get up there? I think I'm going to see if we can pull off a, like a, a Mexican stir fry or a Mexican chicken. Sir, right. Maybe like an Asian Asian fusion Mexican. All right, let's go fire up the Sounds grill. Good. Rob, you're the quiet guy in the barbecue team. Usually. We don't hear. Can I put my sunglasses down? Like, exactly. Keep yeah. them on all you're, the time. You're the discreet guy. You showed up with this fancy grill. So I decided to, today we're going to do like a chicken fried rice. We're going to start out with some, uh, get some onions let's on the grill and get that prepping. This chicken fried rice in the backyard on the grill. Perfect. So we'll get these cooking and let them cook for a bit. And yeah, we'll, get, we'll get that cooked and we'll get some veggies in there. everything right on the grill. I absolutely am. And what, what do you have in here? Yeah. So peas, we got we got peas, carrots, and a little bit of corn. Okay. We'll get that all cooking down so it's all nice and soft and tender. And then we'll be ready to add the chicken and the rice. And we'll combine it all and we'll be ready to eat. Those look like awesome. they're uh, fresh from the garden. Fresh from, fresh. Up. Took them out of the garden and froze them. Frozen. Just had them frozen, cute. ready to go for tonight. Perfect, perfect dice there. All right, our veggies are. I uh, just checked them; they're warming up here. Onions are looking good. We got some ice, some oh, yeah. rice going on yeah, here now. Yeah, pre-cooked rice, and we're gonna just add the chicken. Bring that up to a nice, warm temperature. It's all pre-cooked, by the way, just in case. Kind of got four sets. We're gonna get everything cooking up, warmed up, and then, and then everything's we'll just gonna come together. together yeah. Gonna put an egg in there. I am gonna put an egg in there. Awesome, good yep. stuff. All right, let's get this all heated up. Okay. Oil. We got water. Get it all steaming up. So what do you do? You said you got water. So in some cases you're putting this on with yeah. oil. In some cases you're just using water. Oil I'll use for the chicken to stop it from sticking. Yeah. Uh, again, it's in the in the process of of getting nice and seasoned. Yeah. And then usually I just use the water just to add a little bit of steam, right? Just to get everything steamed up nicely. Okay. All right, perfect. Yeah. Rob, this smells great. It's looking good. We got everything kind of coming together. This is a very happy grill right now. Chicken fried rice, there has to be eggs, right? There's got to be eggs. So All I'm right. going to go ahead and add a couple eggs to the uh, to the concoction right All now. Right. We're going to get this into an omelet form. Mashing it around right on the grill, keep the heat going. Yeah, get her nice and thin. All right, you got to mix all this together. We do. We got to add a little bit of soy sauce, get that nice coloring coming in and the nice saltiness from the soy. I've got a little bit of sesame oil. Sesame oil, bring up the heat a little bit. Bring up the heat, yep. Oh, that's looking good. That's looking good. Oh, it smells fantastic. Hey, boys, can you smell that back there? Yeah, to see what it looks like. There's forks over there for us. Um, and this uh, is definitely better to cook outside because we're getting more rice on my feet. I know, I apologize. I'll do that in the house. It's I'll all, feed, good. It's I'll all feed, good. I'll feed the squirrels for you for the uh, rest of the weekend. <laughs> so any particular length of time at this point, or are you just mixing it for No, flavor, I'm just trying right? to mix it up, making sure that the egg is all cooked up. Yeah. And then the, the very final thing we do is just add a little bit of sesame oil to give it that little Asian uh, Asian flavor. And final note, we don't and really want to cook that. We just note. want to yep, kind of blend exactly. it in. Just blend it in. Get the flavor going, and then we should be good to go. So you're the quiet guy in the barbecue team, but man, you took on this grill here. This, this well, thank you, thank food, you. So. Yeah, I don't. I, I tend not to speak a lot when we uh, have other photo shoots. But What's that uh, saying? Walk quietly, carry a big grill. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Here we go. Load that up. I think we are. All right, boys. Hey guys, enjoy. We we thought Rob was the quiet guy in the barbecue team. 
He put together this chicken fried rice. Let's dig in. Is this the vegan version you serve to your family? No, not the vegan version. Jim. Wow, it smells great, buddy. Rob's chicken fried rice mm -hmm. cooked like in the it. outdoor kitchen on the grill, the Blackstone. Hey, Rob, why don't you walk us through this and tell us how <laughs> to put it Rob together. used up his seven words today. <laughs> I did. I did. What else have you cooked on the Blackstone? I've done um, some burgers. I've done some smash burgers. Uh, we found the, uh, the greatest thing on the Blackstone so far for a vegetarian family is uh, having vegetarian uh, burgers, like uh, vegan burgers. What'd you guys think of that, uh, that fried rice dish? That was good. That's, pretty, that's, that's great. Awesome. That, that Blackstone is a great addition to an outdoor kitchen for sure. Jeff, all I ask yeah. is we get that open fire fired up and we use that. I see all the machinery out there, but we got to go back to basics. So you're the new guy though. Just You're saying. the new guy. Yeah. We've got a lot of experience barbecue. And uh, so my challenge is for you, the new guy, skip the barbecues right to the open fire. I have something to teach you guys finally. been learning all summer, and now I can teach you something on the open fires again. I'm in. All right, let's, let's get up it. there. Let's fire up the grill. Go. Let's get it going. Mark, the challenge has been thrown down. I hear you. I want to thank Rob for cooking my bacon for me on this project. To be clear, peanut butter, bacon, and banana sandwiches. I have all three prepared, and I have my heat source ready to go. You are prepared, my man. I'm just going to stand back. Just Have saying. at it. Have at it. I want to be a part of the club, and you got to do that right. All right. Knife skills are amazing already. Well, I think the bacon, Rob, is a perfect job. You did it very quietly. Thank you. We're doing pie irons. So it's simple Texas cut bread, buttered on both sides like a grilled cheese sandwich. Why are you yelling? I feel it's important that everyone gets they, to hear. They can hear you. Quiet so Rob told me to yell. Okay. <laughs> it's about buttering both sides of the bread. We took that right off the grill. That's perfect. Yeah. I have them preheated and ready to go. Usually it's just canned pie filling and whatnot, and I always like to mix it up with something a little sweeter, something a little bit better. Oh, so you're putting the bacon inside. Oh, yes. It. Okay, I get it now. And then we'll get one of these bananas for the traditional peanut butter and banana sandwich with that nice salty We're bacon not going to peel it? We are. We're just going to do it after. All right. I'm not going to question the master pie iron... <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you live with a few children, you know how to not waste food. And there's nothing worse than having a banana opened and peeled, sitting on the counter, and half eaten. Three slices should be enough for that one. And then right back in the fire. Yes. Could you grab me the other one? Because I feel like we should have two of these going at wall one time. So, Jim, this is uh, Moffitt's foray into joining the North of the Border Smoking Squad. So, let me get this straight, right? Uh, everything's on the line. Uh, a lot of pressure, and he goes for pie irons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's just, great. Just, we got venison. You know, we got homemade pickles. We got bacon by the pounds. We got yeah. chicken wings. We got turkey sausage. Mark went with the pie irons. Well, you know what? It's better than trying to microwave something. So uh, <laughs> so we're, we're right above microwave. Yeah. Anyways, oh, we'll, we got we'll one see ready how to this go. all plays ready to go. Right. Who wants to try this out? Oh, yeah. Peanut butter, bacon, banana, pie iron sandwiches. Because Mark didn't Sounds feel confident good. cooking steak. Really pick up the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> That's crunchier than you're used to, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Kind of Elvis-ish. I'm, I'm going for it. Yeah. Job so with there. all the ingredients... Oh, I'm yeah. in. Yeah. You know, no, 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 no. You said I do dishes. Oh. No, no. <laughs> if I were an eight-year-old, I would really like this. Bachi, you got a pork tenderloin over there, right? Yep. At some point today, yep. you got to cook it on the open fire. Okay. Moffat, our new guy, goes right for the pie irons, yeah. skips everything, goes right for the open fire. That's brave. That's brave. He went out of his comfort zone. Mr. Collins, our pit master, I'm going to throw you out of your comfort zone. I'm going to show you a new way to cook on the discada. I'll one-up that, Jeff. I'll, I'll cook on the discada and, you know, give me some of the seafood, the clams, maybe some sausage, and I'll do a, a drunken clam dish. We, we've cooked that before. It's great with bread or over some, some pasta. And uh, the discada, I think, <laughs> it's not a grill, so nothing is going to go between the, uh, the, the grills, like will you go, said. Will fall through, so we yeah. can definitely use it as a. All right. A, a, so the challenge is we're going to do drunken clams, we're going to do them on a discada, and you've never cooked on a discada. Never cooked on a discada. All right, let's do that. So, hey, Jim, the, you saw the discada. Yeah. And uh, I know you like to cook on a smoker, but I'm tripping you up, buddy. This is all about competition day here. Yeah. It's a challenge to cook on something that I, I haven't cooked on before, but you know what? I've heard, heard a lot about it, and I've seen you cook on your discada in the backyard and uh i hope you, you remembered because i'm not showing you anything yet. yeah i kind of tried to take some of the, the the things that i thought would have been harder for the uh the team so they're not scrambling around trying to do that <laughs> what we're doing here is just removing the casings from the sausage because we're going to uh, use the sausage meat but i didn't want to really cut it into right. to discs okay. so you got onions got garlic 
butter, you grabbed some spices. Which one did you grab? I went with the, the spicy, spicy one? but not the ghost. But so, not the ghost. Uh, a little, okay. little in between. Some wine, some there. cream, olive oil, all the stuff. We're going to head over to the, uh, we'll move it all over to the discotta. We'll fire it up and then you're going to walk us through what you're doing from there. Uh, yeah, I, do I don't see why not. This is it. I'm going to fire on the propane. We're going to get a good burner going over here. You're talking about cooking uh, drunken clams. Why don't you fire it up for me? All right, let's do it. All right, Jim, the flame's going. Perfect. What do you need? I will be the sous chef. Um, why don't you, you grab one of those? some some olive oil to start? I heard the discotta is usually made out of steel or iron. What is what is this made out of? Stainless steel. Stainless steel. That's great. Uh, it heats up quick. You got to you got to watch your heat. Okay. If I had any words of advice, I'd say watch your heat. All right. Let's just go with the sausage right there. All right. And we're just gonna grill this down for a couple of minutes right now and brown this up. All right. So we're gonna get this all browned up. You yep. can see the heat really cranking up. Okay, Jeff. Why don't you give me a few of the Onions, let's go with the onion. Now we're not gonna go with a lot because I know that some of the guys are gonna wanna use this for, for later on. So we'll just put a little bit of onion in there. Okay. So one of the things we can do with this is you can scrape your ingredients to the side and add the other ingredients and then pull it all together. That's, that's. I was aware of that and yeah. that's because of the shape, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jeff, why don't you give me a little bit of the garlic right now? What's the definition of a little bit? Um, we can pour that all in here, so, that's fine. Never too much garlic. See that much? No, no, dump the whole thing. That in. much? Uh, again, the whole thing. That's perfect. Yeah. And then if you want, why don't you open up some of the wine? That put that, so this will idea. deglaze all that happiness on the bottom of the pan. Yeah. We want about half a cup in there. And then sure. the chicken stock or broth as you uh, you have it there. Okay, that's good. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, that's whoa, enough. Whoa. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then the clams. You still oh, have one bat more in there. I didn't know you wanted all the clams. That's okay. Now, if you can get me that lid, that would uh, that would be great too. I, I see you wanted to use some of that magic spice. It's, it, it says it's spicy That's and perfect. it is, but it's not yep. crazy. So we're just gonna leave that for a few minutes then and we'll just uh, allow the clams to kind of steam up. Okay, so now the clams have opened, we're just gonna move them up. Actually, Jeff, one of the nice things about the discotta is we can actually just keep some of the stuff uh, on the side. So we'll just move the clams up to the side. And then we'll give the ones that aren't open another minute. Yeah, we'll do that. So now the stuff's been in here for eight minutes. We have three that haven't opened, so we'll just discard those off to the side. You can give me some of that uh, that cream. We will put some butter in there um, just to how uh, much of this do you want to help soft everything up? I get um, we're supposed to be putting in about a cup, but right. uh, you that's want about a crazy. Yeah, that's fine. That's and if you want to give me maybe two or three of those. Uh, chunks of butter we'll melt that in there some goodness so we're just going to let that go for about two or three minutes um probably on medium heat so i'm hoping your discot is set to medium see with most of the grills and smoke smokers we actually have a temperature gauge so we can this tell not, what this we're is, doing this is old school, I, 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 yes exactly perfect jeff there we go we got one of the guys open this guy did so these two haven't the other one's sprung yeah, open. so we're going to lose those so we'll two. lose these two and then if you have a spoon we can take all of this goodness out yeah. and put that onto a platter, and I think we're good to go. All right, guys, anybody hungry still? Absolutely. Yeah. More food, all more right, food. All right, guys, I've prepared some drunken clams. Jeff's going to scoop that out. Of course, the of challenge us. for Jim was to cook on something besides a smoker. And use the clams, apparently. And what did he use yeah. for this dish? Well, he decided to take one for the team and use the difficult ingredients. Okay. Right. It smells awesome. It yeah. does smell good. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And a little bit of mm. wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is good, actually. It's really good. It'd be great with some crusty bread. So what makes them drunken? We added wine. Uh, we added wine we added to it. Wine. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you can do it. You could probably do it with beer or mm -hmm. really any any alcohol there. It's just really the steam clams. Yeah. Hey, drunken clams, Jim. You mastered the discotta pretty quick. It, uh, thank you. It was, it wasn't that hard actually. It was, <laughs> it's very user friendly. I get a lot of grief for cooking on anything other than a smoker, but you <laughs> enjoyed cooking on that. Did you find that it was like a walk? I found it was like a walk, except it's shallower and the heat distributes. Now, yes, you do get a lot of grief for not cooking on a smoker. And as you continue to use the discotti, you will continue to get more grief <laughs> now that I've cooked on it. You up there, you're the, you're the guy who does a lot of pulled pork, a lot of ribs and yep. all that. So I've got several types of pork. Any thoughts on what you want to do with that? Well, you told me I could use anything on the table, right? Right. So I'm going to leave it at that. I, uh, I saw a couple things on that table and... Uh, There's a bunch of ingredients uh, up yeah, there. Yeah, I think that you, uh, we're going to make a nice pulled pork. Uh, that's gonna I'm not going to let you get away this with this. This might be the time to put some of the limitations down. I, 
I'm worried about no, this don't now. Worry. No, no, no. You can't get away with simple pulled pork around here, though. No, not around here. Not with these folks. All yeah. right, these guys are going to watch. Let's go cook some pork. All right, Mr. Colin, you're going to cook yeah. some pulled pork. You got to take it up a notch. You can use anything on this table. What are you yeah. going to do? Well, I've got uh, a couple of pork butts here. Um, and actually, they look pretty clean. They're, uh, I'm not going to trim anything off. What I like to do is I like to season them, uh, just get a nice rub on there first. Okay. So uh, we need some sort of a binding agent, maybe a mustard or a honey or something. Um, I've got a mustard-based barbecue sauce we can use. Excellent. And sure, what that's else? great. What else? Uh, and and then maybe a little dry rub. Some dry rub? Yep, just all right. an all-purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smoke them on the, uh, on the baby green egg, but I'm going to put it on there in a pan, uh, indirect heat, and we're going to smoke it uh, you know, low and slow. Um, and uh, we'll get it up to an internal temperature that's uh, good enough to be pulled apart. How are you going to take it up a notch? It's fall. We can't just do pulled pork. You can do pulled pork anytime. Right. Okay. What else you got on the table? I can use anything on the table. Anything on the table. Okay. Not my wife's decorations. She's going to have to find a new decoration because uh, I want to use this, actually. All right. Well, let's get, what are you going to do? Cook it inside the pumpkin? We're going to finish it inside the pumpkin. Let's do a fall uh, sort of uh, uh, pumpkin spice pulled pork. I think pumpkin be spice good. pulled yeah. pork. So we're going to take these two butts. Yeah. So you want some olive oil? Yeah. All right. So a little bit of olive oil in there. Maybe you can throw some of the onions. I don't want to touch Okay. because uh, we're not going to use all of them. Just, but just throw layer some. of onions to get yeah. some flavor going in there. Perfect. Yeah. Normally I just so. put regular mustard, but right. this will give it uh, This is their hot. that notch that we want to kick it, right? right? So just give it a good rub. And all you want to add in some there. rub as well? Let's, this yeah. is already so now, hot. Let's take it up a notch. Yeah. Give a nice liberal amount there. Okay. Okay, pat that in. Season at the bottom Let's as well. Let's do all sides. Yeah, so we're gonna stick uh, the probe in here. I'm gonna go uh, inside the bigger one here. Okay. And we're gonna cook this to an internal of about 200, 210. And when that's done, we'll, we'll get over. creative. So let's take it on over to, right, the, uh, to the egg. So we're gonna put that on, get that lid closed. Choke it up a bit. Yep, I think we're good there. And time will tell. All right, sounds All right. good. You got lots of smoke. We got some. Yeah. What, what did we put in there? So kind of? in there, I put a uh, sugar maple. Sugar rock, maple, and, and uh, that's just flavor. smoking nicely right now. All right, let's let's yeah. leave it and forget about it for a couple hours. Great, awesome, Jeff. I'm gonna uh, take this off now. So we're we've reached an internal of about 205. Okay. So that's good enough as it is. But so we want to continue this. You've cook. done this part before. Yeah. Everything from this point on is we're gonna try this for new. All right, new turf, right? Let's grab that part, okay. man. So. Oh, that looks beautiful. There we go. All right, let's bring it over here. So we got to season up the pumpkin, right? Right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is on the inside, let's do a little bit of that. Uh, you have a little spice rub that I noticed. It was sort of a fall. Uh, yeah. Is, we're going through my my uh, spice yeah. cupboard. You grabbed yeah, well, this Moroccan, Moroccan spice. right? This has got yeah. your nutmeg and coriander, ginger, all that sort of stuff. Pu well, you, you were calling it pumpkin spice pulled Pum pork. Yeah. Fall pumpkin. pumpkin spice pulled okay. pork, right? So I should so, probably season up the inside. Yeah, season that up. Right? Yeah. Okay. A little bit of butter there. And then we're going to throw this on top of the butter. Okay. I'm going to take the probe out since we don't need it in. Uh, at this point. We're right. already cooked, right? And we got to get so, this in here. So we'll just throw those right in there. Yeah, just toss right. them in. The idea here is now we want to infuse the uh, the nutmeg, the cinnamon, all the other stuff that's in that um, in that spice, okay. as well as the, pump, the pumpkin as well. Uh, right, so so we're going to keep the moisture in there. Season that up a little sure, bit. Sure, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Fill that whole thing up. And do we put okay. the lid on? Oh yeah, we put the we lid put on. The lid we on. want this. We want this to uh, uh, infuse into the flavor of the pork, right? I'm going to throw it back on the uh, on the baby egg here. All right, let me All head right. over there with Let's you. Go. So right in the middle is that? A so we've got that nice and uh, low. I've got it dampened down, uh, so that should bring the temperature down to this about. This whole thing's an experiment, so let's see what yeah. happens. All right, let's let it cook. All right, Jeff. So right, I'm going to open this up here, and I have no uh, idea. What, we have no idea we're going to. I got to tell you though, I just took a little peek, and yeah. it looks pretty good. And uh, pumpkin spice pulled pork. Pulled pork. Let's check it out, man. Yeah, we're going to give it a try. Now look at that oh, pumpkin. See how that's oh, you got just some spillage. Oh, it's just brilliant. Put that right on here. Oh, put that right Woo. there, and yeah, there sear you go. my eyebrows off and everything. Yeah. Well, we're going to take all the pork out. What and do we I want to put dump, it all we're in gonna there. We're going to dump the whole thing. Dump or? it in there. And, yeah. Just break that all apart there. Yeah, you know what? Bit. Get some of that pumpkin in there too. Why wouldn't we, right? Now, can you smell that? I can. Isn't that This brilliant? one has that Moroccan spice. Yeah. They smell this cinnamon, is... coriander. Yeah. Nutmeg, pepper. Yeah. All right. Some butter. Let's just start pulling, right? Yeah. All right, boys, ready? This is the this is the piece de resistance. This is Colin's challenge for the day. This is the pumpkin spice pulled pork. Pulled pork cooked in a pumpkin. So we actually used a, um, a nutmeg 
spice. Uh, what was it called? It was a Moroccan. Moroccan. It's a mixture of Moroccan spices. Yeah. Which are basically your pumpkin spice. And then <laughs> what gives it the pumpkin spice also is the real pumpkin oh, that we cooked it in. So, so let's see. You can definitely taste pumpkin. Oh, you really taste the pumpkin. Mm. You could use a little you more salt, maybe some heat. You know but what? it does it's have a nice... It's actually pretty good. It does have a nice flavor. This is the best thing we've ever done. So that was that was a, a pretty amazing. You, you, you tackled that pork. With the challenge was to do it. And you couldn't do basic pulled pork. No. And I think the pumpkin thing was a whole new angle on that. You said pumpkin. anything on the table? You, I, you think, guys? What's the vote yeah. on the on the uh, pumpkin really pulled pork? Unique. I think it was really unique. Yeah, yeah it was really good. It kind of has all the the Moroccan yeah. spices, yeah. all those fall flavors in them. So speaking mm -hmm. of fall hunting season, uh, there's some other types of meat up there. You brought something specific for it. What are you going to cook for us? Uh, we got some back straps, deer back straps, so like uh, your strip loin. Venison, and you're, you're going to keep it simple. Let's go throw that on because I yeah. know we already talked about it a little bit, and you're going to kind of keep it simple, and uh, it's going to have some great flavor. Oh, I'm excited about this. Venison. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm not going to lie, Marco. This is probably bigger by twice the size of the piece of venison we served 95 people at a Big Green Egg Fest a while ago. I've heard the back. story. You, Jim's you, told you, me the story. You've heard the story. So, yeah. uh, this is great, and uh, did, is this your own venison? You this got, is you... Uh, shot and killed by my dad in All right. Manitoba. All right, good. Um, so we got two different rubs: a coffee infused rub, and then this uh, hardcore. And you carnivore. have a theory why you use a coffee infused one because it takes the gaminess in your opinion out. I, I think I, I find it just really enhances the flavor of the, of the venison. Yeah. So. Okay. You're going on a smoker. Yeah, we're going straight. We're going direct uh, direct heat. Yeah. 400, 425. Okay take it to about 115 120. Okay, now do you put olive oil or anything on yours? No, nope. I just you, get the grill hot. Just dry rub and a hot grill. Yep. All right, let's throw these on the grill. 400 degrees. Those are beautiful looking pieces of venison for sure. So you're not going for a hard course here? No. On this one? No, venison's so lean, right? All right, let's give those a few minutes. These look great. We've let them rest. What do we? Wait, five minutes, eight minutes? Five minutes. Ten minutes. About five yeah, minutes or so. We're yeah. ready to slice them up. So, no, hey, right. Colin, yeah. remember when we sliced up a piece of venison? What was it? It was probably this big. Oh, at the big green egg. Let me show you the technique that we used. We oh, had yeah, a, this is brilliant. We had that, as we were talking earlier, we had a lineup, and honestly, there's probably 30 people lined <laughs> up waiting to this because we, we were the, really the only booth at this big green egg fest that was doing anything edible. <laughs> and so, we had this massive lineup, and of course, Colin and I have the microphone. We got the microphone coming hanging. up. We got venison loins and venison. So people are crowding around. <laughs> Suddenly, we realize we have this and a line as far as we can see. The yeah. first guy comes up with his plate. I grab the thing and I want to make it look a second. All right, I hope you're hungry. You got great venison. Oh yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm hovering over just watching. <laughs> and the, guy, the guy goes, "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> so we'll slice them a bit bigger, and uh, well, that oh, looks great. beautiful. Here, Marco, those are your venison. I'm going to let you slice sure. those up. We'll lay them up. The boys back there are getting hungry. Okay. So, uh, Chef's Treat, right? Here. We get Absolutely. to try the first, uh, the first slice. Cheers. Cheers, cheers man. Yeah, oh, are we, we cheersing? Oh, wow. Juicy. That is super juicy. Guys, you want to sit down? We're bringing on the venison. Okay. Yeah, we're going to keep them. Hope everybody's hungry. We got some meat. Marco's venison. We got some venison. Oh, it's, it's, you know, like we sliced it up earlier there. Fanny? There's a coffee one. Or are we going to get fanny some? Or? It's not a lot of game. No. Nope. Not a lot of game flavor there. No, oh, it's fantastic. Mm. Look how juicy it is. So yep. that, mm. that Jim, that makes you happy coming off the smoker yeah. that way, right? That's what you're always talking oh, yeah. about. Absolutely. Heard you guys, you and Big Mike talking about a, rolling a turkey dinner. Or Mike hasn't been at the grill yet. So I say we get Mike up there. I'm going to cook up a bunch of chicken wings. You're going to go home. You don't live that far. You're going to grab some hot sauce. Yep. Get your four hottest. Everybody's stuffed. All we've done is eat all this talk of the discata. The discata really shines when we do a paella. So I feel like we have to step up and do a paella on it. Mm. 